In this video I would like to talk a little bit about the problems which spirits can cause. So, first of all, if a person is being bothered by a spirit, we need to find out what type of spirit or spirits are bothering the person. So, there are roughly four domains which the spirit could belong to. Um, the first domain is uh, the domain of the elemental energies. Uh, elemental spirits are relatively simple-minded. Um, they tend to be more followers than leaders, so they do whatever they're told. And they're connected to the different elements, the earth, water, uh, air, fire. And they, in a way, see often uh, beings in higher dimensions as being yeah, their leaders or higher beings which they should follow. And typically these spirits do not create a problem because they're under the influence of your own spirit which in a way um, yeah, tells them to maintain the body and to regulate the body and the same for the spirits which are in the environment. If something is your house or your garden those spirits will tend to respond to your wishes and to your needs. If the earth itself or uh, becomes very uh, disrupted and these spirits feel somehow threatened or uh, blocked in doing their work, they can become aggressive. So it happens sometimes that if a person is renovating or um, digging around in the garden or there's big constructions going on, that these elemental spirits can yeah, become upset because they are doing their thing and they become frustrated because suddenly the wall they were keeping upright is no longer there or the energy they were moving through the earth they cannot do it because the earth is suddenly gone. Um, so it, it happens that these spirits become discontent. Um, these spirits are not often yeah, worked with consciously. There's very few people who uh, actually have the talent to uh, to work with these kinds of beings and to sense them very readily. Um, so it hardly ever happens that people get into conflict with uh, elemental spirits. Elemental spirits they just do their own thing and they can tend to get stuck into a pattern. So if something is just repeatedly going, happening in a certain way, uh, then it can be that there's an elemental spirit which is trying to, in a way, yeah, they're usually quite conservative in their nature, trying to create a certain pattern or to keep things going while it is no longer suitable. So they also maintain the atmosphere of the place. So, for instance, if something uh, bad happened um, in a location, they will also maintain the imprint of that uh, of that energy which can ultimately lead to problems because that negative energy the depression or sadness or anger will hang around in that room and will affect you and will then yeah create knock-on effects which yeah start strengthening each other but if you yeah can just work with them you start cleaning the room physically and you also have this intention like I want all the old energy to move out, I want new energy to move in, I want this to be a place of happiness or joy or playfulness or meditation, then the spirits will tend to respond to that if there's not another force which is yeah, pushing them to hold on to something else. So these elemental spirits are never malevolent, uh, but they can cause problems. So the next domain are the uh, spirits which are connected to life force, the etherical spirits. Etherical spirits try to take care of all living things, whether they are animals or plants or in a way also the earth itself. And they can get angry. So um, people tend to, um, yeah, in a way, diminish the amount of variety of life. Um, they also do things in a very um, brusque way like clearing forests or um, yeah, butchering uh, young animals which are not ready to die yet, who haven't lived a full life. And these um, yeah, life spirits, they get very upset at human behavior. Um, and they tend to get triggered by certain uh, 
yeah, qualities of humans. Um, they do not like it that humans are very greedy, that they're very insatiable, um, that they're very insensitive. Um, so especially people with these qualities tend to get attacked a lot by these uh, life spirits because these life spirits recognize that these are kind of qualities of humans which cause them to, um, yeah, to harm uh, lots of beings, to disrupt nature. Um, usually if you live in, an, uh, in most environments the nature spirits are just afraid of humans. They consider them to be, yeah, just like a rabbit is afraid of, the, uh, of, a, of a hound. They consider humans to be predators who will destroy their domain, their life force, and ultimately also them and will hunt them. So most nature spirits and life force spirits are just avoiding uh, humans like the plague. But yeah, sometimes they can become uh, vengeful or angry. Um, and cause uh, problems. The problems they can cause are quite severe. Uh, potentially they can kill because they can influence also the life force in a human. Uh, it doesn't happen very often but it can happen. Um, these spirits are quite independent spirits so they tend not to listen very well to mages or other people trying to control them because they have their own agenda. Uh, they're sometimes willing to trade or to cooperate, but they're not by nature very obedient. They don't believe in, very much in a, in a hierarchy. Like they have a respect for greater spirits. Um, they have a gratitude if you, if you help them. Um, but yeah, they're not slaves. So then we get to the category of spirits which usually are the cause of the problem. These are the astral spirits. Um, astral spirits are very similar in a way to humans. They have personality, they have thoughts, they have feelings. Uh, what they don't have is a body, but that's pretty much the only difference between us. Uh, not having a body means also they lack life force which ultimately makes them a little bit weaker uh, but in a way their domains they can see very clearly so they can very clearly see people's thoughts they can very clearly see people's emotions and just like we can manipulate physical objects like move a glass or a cup or um, cut a, a potato they can do the same with thoughts and emotions so they can very easily change our minds and change our directions and this makes them rather problematic to deal with. In a way also events on the astral level tend to foreshadow events on the physical level. So they have a form of precognition, they often know days in advance uh, what is likely to happen and they will respond to it. So I find that often um, before I get a call from a person who's affected by these types of spirits, often typically two or three days before, I will start, uh, yeah, experience um, negative effects of these spirits trying to prevent me from helping the, their victim. So this can manifest themselves into the typical signs of uh, negative energy, so headaches, feeling that you're being choked. Uh, tension in the stomach, feeling like vomiting, burping, throwing up. These are all signs that there is a negative energy yeah, at work around you. And often I will notice these signals um, when these spirits are in a way trying to um, stop me from um, having a contact with their victim. Often the victim themselves are also affected, so often they will find uh, when you do finally talk to them that they've tried to talk to you many times before but every time something happens they're distracted they forget about it um, so they feel that they are not masters of their own thoughts masters of their own emotions and this is often a sign that there are astral spirits which are uh, affecting them um, often these astral spirits will try to prevent the yeah, the energy worker from interfering 
uh, typically by causing distractions or uh, dreams or other problems. So the person might, yeah, I might become sick, I might have nightmares, I might have suddenly lots of other emails or people contacting me or flooding me with and uh, drawing their attention. So I won't continue with my work uh, and ultimately the person won't be, uh, won't be helped and the spirits will be able to continue their plaguing of their victim. So this is often a sign that astral spirits are at work. Um, there are a few ways to further categorize these astral spirits. Um, one of them is are they bound to a location or bound to a person? Uh, most astral spirits, I would say 80% of them, are bound to a location. So they're most powerful in a certain place. And by changing place, um, they their influence is diminished because they typically are trying to find a place where they can exert the most influence on you and they kind of like build up an energy field which will help them influence that person so they create you could say their astral equivalent of an operating room which allows them to operate on the person's mind and such an operating room is typically found in a place where the other person is most at their most vulnerable. So the bedroom is usually the place where the person is um, yeah, attacked the most because during their, uh, their sleep they're relatively defenseless um, because they tend to leave their aura, also the aura tends to weaken during the night, uh, which gives them an opportunity to um, yeah, create an influence on that person. Uh, also the the places where the person is a lot and where the energy is very stagnant so typically the place of work uh, is also a uh, living room can also be places which yeah they will in a way lay a trap for that person uh, in places where the energy tends to move a lot and be very unstable such as the bathroom and the kitchen they tend to be the least affected places because it is more difficult to build up an energy there um, yeah, while there's constantly life force, food moving in and out, or water draining away the energies which are built up in the place. Another way is to create an artificial drain by create by adding, for instance, burning candles, uh, bright light, um, even a little um, fountain or a little yeah rotating water to refresh the energy there. So these are all things you can do to, yeah, in a way, prevent too much of an astral charge being created in a place. Um, spirits which are bound to a person, they are less common. Um, they are usually really uh, only able to connect to that person by exploiting a certain weakness, um, a certain hole in the person's astral defenses. So usually the aura keeps those spirits out, but yeah, people have weaknesses and blind spots in their defenses and these can be exploited, which will allow a spirit to, in a way, settle in the aura or even in the body. And then the yeah, spirit will be there constantly and will just be yeah, pulling the strings also constantly. Um, in such a case, yeah, changing the environment is not much help uh, and you will have to in a way, try to get the spirit out of the, uh, out of the aura. Um, there usually can, you can see on, in the aura a point of entry, a point where in a way the spirit in a way, opened up the aura like yeah, a crack in the shell and the spirit inserted itself to be able to affect that person and depending on the amount of healing which has happened uh, you can typically tell whether the spirit has entered the aura very recently or already months ago. If it is more than months ago it's very likely the aura has healed over and you cannot see the entry point anymore. So the final category of spirits are the higher spirits which are beyond the astral. So these are, um, in a way, uh, people who are enlightened or um, uh, deities. And you may think like, well, if a, a being is a higher being, then okay, why would they bother? Well, typically they don't, but sometimes they do. 
So um, there are enlightened people who uh, practice uh, dark magic even after their deaths and there are gods which are very much on the light side but there are also gods which are on the dark side um, and besides that there's of course the different yeah, cosmoses and different agricores uh, spirit groups uh, which are also in conflict with each other so even when both things are on the light side there can be a low level of conflict going on and some interference going on from that angle um, higher beings are yeah very very difficult to um, convince to to stop what they're doing because we don't really ha hold the power over them um, that is lower beings so the elemental beings life force and there are still beings they can influence us and we can influence them and higher beings can influence us but we don't have a lot of tools to influence them um, the only thing you can do is try to find allies in these higher worlds which may speak or act on your behalf and create some yeah pressure on these higher be other higher beings to in a way stop whatever they are doing um, one of the things to be mindful of is that even if a being is a higher being there are still spiritual laws and these spiritual laws one of them is that they cannot create blockages which are completely impossible so they can in a way create a hindrance which may yeah require the person to exert themselves to um, yeah really put in some effort to overcome the hindrance and yeah this is an allowable level of interference but they're not allowed to create a hindrance which is ins insurmountable so in that case either they would have to yeah, reduce the hindrance or to remove it or you are allowed to yeah, give the person an amount of support which allows them to overcome the blockage if they break these kinds of laws you can yeah, apply to spiritual authorities uh, the solar angels um, enlightened masters um, planetary spirits or um, um, other protective angels um, lords of karma um, spirits of justice and things like this to intervene on your behalf to deal with this higher spirit interference um, in a way it's also good for people to realize that uh, demons are also in a way higher spirits they're not astral beings they're beings on a higher level of power uh, they're just very malevolent and sometimes also very inflexible and very limited in their consciousness but not limited in their power so this is a bit of an overview uh, oh one more important thing i forgot to add when dealing with astral spirits um, it is very important to make a distinction whether they're being coerced into um, attacking that person or doing it out of their free will um, because if a person is being attacked by an astral spirit um, it can be that the astral spirit is in a way uh, doing that in, as a mercenary so they're being paid by somebody else by typically a mage uh, with energies usually higher level of energies to perform a certain task it can also be that they're threatened by the mage that certain qualities they possess will be taken away from them if they don't perform their task so they're in a way hostages or slave soldiers and that happens quite a lot um, especially um, when dead people are employed they're often slave soldiers so these dead people are used to attack uh, a certain victim uh, because the necromancer is basically denying them an afterlife unless they obey so they're in a way held prisoner and often yeah you can in a way provide them for a way out which doesn't yeah involve you getting into a direct conflict with them by liberating them from whatever bonds are uh, forcing them to do this or protecting them against their um, their slave masters for instance and then you can turn in a way your enemies into allies um, if they are 
some of them are also doing it to maintain their position in a higher world. So they are summoned from a lower dimension and um, allowed to come into this world on the condition that they perform a certain task for the summoner. And often they are able to maintain themselves in this higher dimension by stealing energy from their victim. Um, and yeah, of course they are in a way willing, because they like to be in this higher world, uh, but also they are unable to yeah, maintain themselves without the help of their uh, master. So by denying them the help of their master and denying them the help or the energy of their victim, they are often naturally returning to their own uh, domain. Um, so I hope this yeah, gives a little bit of an inkling on how to deal with yeah, the easiest and most common of problems, spirits. Um, sometimes it's very minor, so that uh, the person has wronged the, the spirit in some way and they're just yeah, looking for an apology or a person to do the right thing uh, or to change their ways. Uh, but yeah, they can also be yeah, tools for uh, a person who's uh, performing black magic. Okay, I hope this has given you some handholds on how to deal with this type of problem.